Forest Hills, an upper middle class enclave in the heart of Queens, New York, where more than 70,000 people live within two square miles. The neighborhood streets are busy, but PJ's restaurant is empty. That's me, that's me. Prior to opening the restaurant, Joe and Madeline were living a dream life. <laughs> when I first came to the States, I started working in construction, worked with my brother, PJ. PJ and I were very, very close. He really, truly taught me about life and be my own man. I lost my home for 20 years, worked as hard as I could to get my wife and kids, nice things, a nice house. We were going places. And then PJ passed away. Joe was a shell. Joe was just empty. I can't mention his name without feeling that hurt inside, you know? He didn't really know how to walk without that guy being around. He just meant everything to him. I just couldn't stand to see him in pain. And when this place came for rent, I said, go and get the key, and we'll, we'll just name it after PJ. Welcome to PJ. Which is even more special, because this was the bar that PJ owned. How you guys doing? You know what I know about running a high-end steakhouse? Apparently not much. I don't know why we're putting garlic on honey mustard. Joe, it's, it's a honey mustard garlic roasted salmon. That's what it's supposed to be on the menu. Really? Joe and Madeline, they're from a construction background, so they didn't really know what it was like to get into the restaurant industry. My steak just because it's flavorless. Red meat is red meat. I don't know what you would expect myself to do about that. It's a big problem, and the food's inconsistent. I'm a very good chef. People come here just for me. How's everything? That's terrible. I'm sorry. They love my food, and, and everything is great. It was raw. They didn't like the steak. Now I have to avoid two checks. I want this place to work so bad, but we don't know what we're doing wrong. Give me a cigarette right now. Give me a cigarette. I sunk almost $2 million in this restaurant. I see it dying in his shoes right now. The two insurances have to get paid this week. This restaurant, it's cost us it's our savings, our house, our cars, everything. 4000 that was so much money. That's it, I'm going to drink it. Come here. Go and drink it, you've been doing that all day. Joe sits and drink glasses of wine and watch television when there is a million things going wrong here. And he's just basically feeling sorry if the problems aren't addressed. We'll have no choice. We'll have to close the door. PJ Steakhouse. It looks great from the outside. There must be trouble on the inside. Wow. This is beautiful. Unbelievable. Wow. Anybody here? My goodness me. No one at the front desk. <sighs> Hello? So, a customer or? Mr. Ramsey, no, I'm the owner. You're the owner? Ah, huh? right. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Pleasure to see you. Um, good to see you too. Didn't expect to see you uh, at the bar. You've got no one at the front desk there. I see that, yeah. As soon as Chef Ramsey showed up, panic set in, and I started getting the butterflies. We're pretty slow this time of day, so. Slow. Is that normal? It is normal for lunch, yeah. Right. Hello. It's my wife, Milo. Hi, how are you? How are you? Good. Nice to see you. Me too. Oh, Eric. Eric, good to see you. Good to see you. I'm not intimidated by Gordon. We're here to get a job done, and we better do the job the best we can. And if he can help us, great. If he can't, then he will fuck himself. <laughs> well, first of all, I'm happy to be here. Um, somewhat, uh, yeah, taken back by walking in and having seen how beautiful this place is. What's wrong with it? I'm not uh, restaurant material, I found out. Uh -huh. I'm a contractor who uh, jumped into this, who thought I'd get great managers, good floor people, I'd sit back and have a couple of wines at the bar. And I wish opening restaurants were that easy, Joe. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh. You know, I'm learning as I go. It can put you in a hole real fast, a restaurant. I don't know where to go, you know? Okay. Well, I've just arrived. Yeah, I'm starving. I'm going to have some lunch, and then we'll talk after, you. Yeah? yeah, I want to cook him a great meal. And I'm going to let them find other problems in the restaurant besides mine, because I don't think mine's a problem. Oh, dear. Thank you. OK, you're welcome. So, steakhouse. Oh, dear. No porterhouse, no New York, no rump. There's only two cuts of steak. Two steaks on the menu in a steakhouse. It should be minimum eight to ten. 
How are you? Welcome to PJ's. My name is Colin. Farrell, thank you. How are you? Doing great. Thank you for Good joining us. So I'll start with crab cakes, then maybe the shrimp and roasted garlic ravioli, and then I'll have the filet mignon with the uh, gorgonzola demi glace. All right, I'll go put this in for you. Thank you, Colin. No problem. I know Eric's a good chef, so what's to be nervous about? What do you order? Crab cakes plus filet mignon with gorgonzola medium rare and a shrimp ravioli. Right down. I just love what I do. This is perfect. My food is good, and if he critiques it like I've seen him critique other people's food, I'm going to probably throw it at him. <laughs> what is that? The crab cake. Somebody spit on my plate? What is that on there? That's coolie mango sauce. Oh, coolie mango. Thank you. Is that something out of the modern art museum? Splat. OK. Wow. That's fucking disgusting. He's rancid. Plastic bits of crap running through the crab cakes. Is everything OK? Uh, yeah, the chef sent out a little surprise. I've got bits of plastic running through there. See the plastic? I don't know where it came from, but it's definitely in there. But I I'm done with that. Thanks. OK. Severe warning for what's to come. Eric, you found a piece of plastic in there. Where's that from? I don't know, man. Fuck him. I have no idea where that plastic came from. Just happened to appear. I don't even have a place to get my kids out. The owner sat at the bar watching television, and they wondering why they're not doing well. Hi. Is that Joe's seat there at the end? Yes. All the time. He'll sit there most of the night. Oh, dear. Joe does need to get off his ass and start paying attention. Oh, here's my food. Fantastic. Let me, let me leave you alone to eat, right? Madeline, thank you. Lovely. Thank you. So. Oof. How'd you like the steak? Um, quite tough. Are they always served with raw onions, or? Yeah. Nah. Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, you said the beef's a little tough. Just fucking get out of here. There's nothing positive being said. I don't really suck that bad, you know? Go oh dear. That looks like the biggest pile of shit ever to be served in Queens. My god. The raviolis are disgusting. Tart, tannin, and just a mouthful of acidic, thick, rich, creamy sauce that tastes like there's a buzz in your mouth. It just seemed like Chef Ramsay didn't like anything. Excuse me. Oh, God. Oh, dear. This is really bad. I can really start to understand to why Queens is running as fast as it can from PJ's. Disgusted by the food in this beautiful restaurant, Chef Ramsay heads to the problem area, the kitchen. Did you cook everything? Yeah. That was pretty fucking embarrassing. 100% pissed me off that Chef Ramsay didn't enjoy my meal. What's with the coolie? Is that something out of the Modern Art Museum? Splat. Where's that from? From a can. From a can. Disgusting. The steak fillet should melt in your mouth, and it did nothing of the sort. That's what we could afford. Eric, come around so I can talk to you properly. I was shocked. I really thought that Eric's food was a lot better than what Chef Ramsay said it was. The food was shit. I get a lot of compliments, man. A lot. A lot of compliments from where? The place is fucking empty. Who's running the place? For the most part, I am. Oh, please. First of all, I'm here every day. You're not here every day. I'm not here enough to mother him, but I am here. He should be here, but he's not doing it. If you're here really overseeing everything, then these problems aren't going to be here. Get your ass off the bar stool and stand in here and do it every single night. Can you motivate yourself to want to keep the restaurant open? I don't know. But he's given up. I see that myself here. Yeah. I've given up. Guys, I'm fucking sorry, but take one good look at yourselves first. If there's one thing that has to change, it's people's attitude around here. Whether you like it or not, you are restaurateurs. You have the fucking responsibility of making this place work. Yep. But there's too many people turning their back on things that are wrong. I've got to get some fresh air. What a shame. We have absolutely no idea what we're doing here. Just a big disaster. Are we opening for dinner? After a miserable lunch, 
Gordon takes time to sit down with the one person who appears to have not given up, Joe's wife, Madeline. The word PJ, where does that come from? Joe's brother. Joe's brother. Joe's brother owned an Irish bar restaurant here 10 years ago, and he died when it was at its peak. He died? How close were they? They were best friend, and he was very sad. He was empty. Right. I was worried for his welfare. I was worried. And when this place came for rent, he came home and told me about it. So I told him, you know, get the key, and we'll put his brother's name back over the door. And he spent all the money, but uh, it helped him. It's getting to him now, just the money. And, and I think that's why he's at that bar having drinks, because he's looking around. He is embarrassed at how this turned out. And how much did he spend? 1.2 million to build it. What does it need to take per week to break even? About 17 to 18,000. What's it currently running at now? Four. Four thousand. Four thousand dollars. Oh my God. Jesus. Uh, take me back. Joe was very successful before he opened the yes. restaurant. Yeah. In construction. Yes. And and where were you living at the time when it was? When successful? we were successful. Yeah. I designed a house. It was incredible. So you designed your dream house. Yes. But we sold it. You sold the house to keep the business open. Yes. We got rid of everything to stay here. But this restaurant did more for me than my house. It, it brought my husband back. How do you, how do you walk away from that? I, well, I can't. This is unbelievable. Well, that's helped me to understand uh, the background. As much as it has cost us to, to keep this place opened, at the same time, it gave us back Joe. And we just can't let it go. We'll do whatever we have to do to keep this place going. After his chat with Madeline, Gordon has a better understanding of what PJ means to this family. Now he wants to learn more about how the business operates, and there's no better way to do that than watching a dinner service. Hi, good evening. Welcome to PJ's. Thank you. Can I take your coat? Oh, I'm actually real comfortable. You have to leave it here. Okay, can I take these two? As is the case with many of the restaurants that Chef Ramsay visits, the word has spread in the community, and PJ's is much busier than normal. Hmm. I'm not used to being the hostess. How would you like that cooked? How well, please. Well done. Ordering a salmon. Well. I just know what's good, and I know what's bad, and I know I can handle the job, I know I can do the job really well, because my food is good. How are the stuffed mushrooms coming? Talk to me for two seconds. He literally doesn't talk behind the line. He doesn't communicate with me, especially when it's busy. The worst situation in the fucking world. Harry. Yes, sir. I've got to talk to them. Come on. At least talk. All what right. table is this? That's a fuck up, Warren. Eric's lack of communication has the staff waiting for direction and the diners waiting for food. Casper normally wait this long for entrees. Yes. Yeah. It usually takes two hours to eat here. From two hours. Two hours from start to finish. Oh. Eric, they're starting to complain now that there's no food out there. <laughs> Come on, you can do better than this, can't you? You give a shit? Yeah, I give a shit. Come on then, big man. This is a steakhouse, yes? PJ Steakhouse. PJ Steakhouse. Yeah. Pathetic joke. That's what it stands for. Come on, guys. Nobody looks too happy here. I know we haven't got our meal yet. Here we come. Didn't get your dinner yet? No. Okay. For the amount of people we had tonight, it was a ridiculous amount of time they had to wait for the food. That's it. I'm going to drink it. Eric, how long on that 16? Putting it up right now. An hour into dinner service, food is finally leaving the kitchen. Because of the amount of customers, everyone is delivering the food. Even Madeline, Gorgonzola. who is clearly not comfortable with the job. All right. Uh, you have this bit of listen. <laughs> uh, let's go over this, OK? Not a waitress, not a hostess. I only own it. So I know nothing about the food. I am probably the only person who owns a restaurant in the world who wouldn't know what good food is. That's the truth. I, I left that part up to Joe from the beginning. Give me a glass of shiraz. 
It's an hour and a half into dinner service. Table 30, all the apps are in the window. Many customers have received food. This is like really weird. But for most, it wasn't worth the wait. It's really gross. You don't like it? Lemonade. Lemonade. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so I'll tell the chef about the chicken. Can you take this off the table, Freddie? Why? You can tell if she didn't like it at all. And what do you want me to do with it? You know what I'm saying? Can we take it off? I'll have a word with them. I went to check the menu. It's chicken Madeira, and I will have them take it off for you. Well, you didn't even recognize it? <laughs> okay. Oh, Thank you. Don't want to make Thank you. I just don't know how to have better manners at the table. How long on 23? Salmon and the filet. That salmon's fucked. Come on, guys. Eric, touch the top of that salmon. It's like a bullet. Yeah, it's too over that. It's only going to come back. Chef Ramsay is standing there and catching the mistakes as they're happening. Look at the crap underneath there. Look at that. Eric, that's well done. Everything just feels like it's turning downward. Touch that there. Yeah, that's not medium. It's a disaster. It was horrible to watch it just fall apart. Come on! No, I can't. It's too much for me. Fucking hell. With a restaurant full of unhappy customers... The chicken is chewing. ...and a kitchen falling apart... Look at that. Harry, that's well done. Chef Ramsay has seen enough of the dinner service and heads to the storage area to see what problems lie below. What's that in there? Stuck to the cardboard box. No one gives a shit about. Look. Oh. Oh my god. Look at that. Ah. Oh. What is that? No. No. Oh. That just sums up the whole restaurant. Fading away, rotten, and just one big fucking embarrassment. Ah. Chef Ramsay knows that tonight's dinner service was not lost on Joe and Madeline. Thank you. But he wants to make sure they have a complete picture of the state of the restaurant. Ay, ay, ay. This is so hard, you know that. I've just come to the conclusion that no one gives a fuck. Stay there. When Chef Ramsay walked in that box, I was terrified. This is the big kick in the bollocks. Oh. I'm not here for this. We're using horrible plastic lemon juice in a sauce that a customer complained about, the fact that it tasted of lemon. We've got fresh lemons downstairs that have gone rotten. I just can't believe it. If it was me, I'd be down with a, with a, with a toothbrush. Here's the killer blow for me, just that one there. Dealing with the restaurant and the food and the customers, one thing. But where the fuck do you start with that? It was beyond bad. It's such a lack of pride. It's such a lack of caring. Who knows what the fuck goes on behind our back? I don't know. It is your job to go in that walk-in box and rotate your stock and clean it out. And it's part of our job to make sure he does it. Why should I have to fucking worry about this shit? Is it your business? You can't stand there and be silent anymore, eh? You can't do that. It seems like the whole blame of this whole place is coming down on my shoulders, and it's not all my fault. I'm not the fucking problem here. We're slopping it out, guys. Just get a bag and, and throw it out. I can't believe that shit, can you? How in the name of God? Imagine the waste of food. We're worse to blame, Joe. I had no idea what was in there. I'm very disappointed with Eric. I realized tonight that a lot of the problems in the kitchen is Eric. Definitely a change has to come. The bottom line is nobody around here wants to work. Nobody. Undeterred by a rough day one, Chef Ramsay hits the streets of Forest Hills, armed with a camcorder 
to do some grassroots research on what people really think of PJ's Steakhouse. Yeah, have we got two seconds? Sure. PJ's the Steakhouse. Have you heard of it? Have you been there? I have. It was not a pleasant experience. When was the last visit to PJ's? Six months ago, I boycotted it. Have you heard of PJ's? Yes. Describe the dinner. Slow, cold, not too good, wouldn't go back. This is incredible. Thank, Thank you. you so much. After hearing what the neighborhood had to say, Chef Ramsay calls the owners and staff to a local theater. Take a seat. We're in this movie theater, and we have absolutely no idea what we're doing there. This is a serious world premiere, and the movie's entitled PJ's, The Word on the Street. Oh, gosh. I don't have a good feeling about this. I'm scared to see what's going to happen. Lights, please. Have you ever been to PJ's? PJ's? I've been there quite often, actually. When was the last visit to PJ's? Six months ago, I boycotted it. They never cooked the steak right. This is incredible. The same shit went on six months ago that I saw last night. How was dinner? Atrocious. Really? That My bad? My son's steak was a hockey puck. I actually recognized two of the customers that was on that tape, and I said, holy shit. I ordered salmon. I got flounder. That's ridiculous. How many people have you told in the last six months not to go there? There's 66 apartments in my building. And you told them all not to go? Yes. It's total bullshit. I wanted to turn around and smack Eric in the mouth. That's how, that's how angry he was. He's behind us, munching on popcorn, but he's grinning his face. What was the food like? Awful. Really? Everything was pretty horrible. Pretty horrible? Yeah, steak chewy, not too flavorful. If you had the chance to change, what would it be? Better food. Better food. That is from the people on the street, and these people are going to keep that place open. My God. I was disgusted with the little movie thing we just saw. I don't believe it's all that true, you know? It's not that bad. Why do you find it funny? We're sat here in an embarrassing situation. It's definitely nothing to laugh about, Eric. I don't know. I don't, I don't believe all of it. It infuriates me. If the food was good, the same was excellent. We have got to start turning this around. Can this restaurant survive with Eric run the kitchen? Devastated but informed by what they heard at the theater, the owners have a clear picture of how PJ's was perceived by the town. But Chef Ramsay has more. Um, there's one big issue. Eric, there's nothing worse than having a chef in the kitchen trying to produce mediocre food. I'm telling you, the engine room is fucked. And if that's not working, nothing's going to work. This business cannot go any further forward with a liability like that. It's just gone to a stage where he should have been gone a long time ago. You realize you're both at fault. Absolutely. Because you're accepting and tolerating yes. the incompetence. And he's taking advantage of your weakness by yes. becoming worse at what he's paid to do. I would like to give him a last chance tonight. I'm going to put him on the spot. I'm going to call it as I say it. Get a grip. Cook your ass off. Or game over for me. Yeah, sounds great. Tonight will be Eric's last chance to save his job. So Chef Ramsay has made a few menu changes to help the kitchen keep up. OK, tonight, we have to start building a reputation up. So we're going to offer a mixed grill. We've got the amazing thighs of chicken, steak, beautifully done on the broiler, a little mini slider, tomato, roasted, lamb sausage, sautéed mushrooms, fries and onion rings. Introducing a mixed grill to say thank you to the neighborhood and welcome back and, and give us a shot. Such a brilliant idea. That is our special this evening. I know not one steakhouse this evening anywhere in Queens is serving a beautiful mixed grill. I love it. You don't get that anywhere. That's great. Eric, anything on there you can't do? No, I can do it all. You can do it all? OK, I need Eric, Madeline, and Joe two seconds, please, yes? This is what I do. Let me do what I do. OK. Eric, one thing I need to see is the timing. The timing has to be absolutely spot on. Tonight's your night. You have to show me that. You have to fucking show me. It's time for Eric to step up to the plate tonight, or there's no room for him here. OK, you're the owners. Who's running it tonight? I am. What are you doing tonight? Salads. Salads. I don't want to see you anywhere near the fucking bar. Run it. Run it, run it, run it. OK? Let's go. <laughs> Hey, how are you? Good evening. Welcome to PJ's. Table four? Yeah. yeah. Follow me. We have our grill for two tonight. Have fun, please. Smile a lot. Smile. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy. 
called our PJ's Mixed Grill. It has a flank steak on it. It has lamb sausage. Comes with grilled chicken. But that's your flank steak right there. Would you like to start out with one of those? Yeah. So what can I get you tonight? Mixed Grill. Mixed Grill special. Thank you. Thanks. This is unbelievable. Already there's a renewed energy going on, and this mixed grill has got them sort of excited, but I know it's early days. However, the big pressure is on Eric and Madeline. She has to run a business, and he has to be consistent in the kitchen. Otherwise, it's fucking history. A strip, a half rack, two fillet. You got a tomato and much salad, Joe. We got a rock tonight. You ready, bro? It's nice to see my husband off the bar stool, on his feet, and back to work. You just have an order? Yeah. Well done. <laughs> Excellent. Eric, when we start to send the mixed grill, what I want to do is see half the table in the window without the other half coming at the same time. Yes, Chef. Excellent, thank you. It makes me feel confident when I can hear a chef's voice behind me. You know that? Yes, Chef. Joe, I'm ready for that tomato mozzarella. Tomato mozzarella. Steak medium. Slider. Just That's lettuce it. and tomato. I need to pick up over here at PJ's Mixed Grill. With Joe and Eric working together, Food is leaving the kitchen at a good pace. Here we are. And now, the first mixed grill special is hitting the table. When the first mixed grill started to go out, you know, you could see people in the dining room looking over and getting excited. How's everything look? It's really cold. Everything's cold? This is cold and this is cold. All right, I'm sorry about that. That steak is so great. I'll be right back. I'm fucking believable. Mushrooms are cold, sausage is cold. It's That's supposed it? to be medium. Oh, come on. Eric, it's the first one. It's the first fucking table. Come on, Eric, please, yeah? Don't let me down, yes? Pick up on that PJ's Mixed Grill. Ordering a salmon. We got a PJ's Mixed Grill. We got a calamari first. The Mixed Grill special is extremely popular, with 21 orders already taken. I need to pick up over here at table 12. The kitchen has pushed out 14 of them in a hurry. Thank you. Now it's time to find out if Chef Ramsay's dish, cooked by Eric, is satisfying the customers. How is everything? I mean, that's terrible. I'm sorry. It's freezing cold. And it was raw. There's some pinkishness in the chicken. I will be right back, OK? Is everything OK? It's ice cold and All right, I'm, I'm very sorry. sorry about that. I'll take it right back. Can you change that for, like, the filet uh, or something? He doesn't like it. Okay. It's just dry. I'll be right back. What's wrong with it? it? Needs to be. He said it's cold. Oh, oh come on. Madeline, does that chicken look pink to you? Yeah, very. Watch it one time, Al. Everything's coming back. Uh, I'm so fucking lost, man. He hates it. Oh, come on. This is getting worse than last night. Eric couldn't cook a sausage. It, it was sad. What's going on here, guys? There's one simple fucking dish on there to make things look somewhat easier. Yeah, real fucking simple. Come there. I've never, ever, ever, ever seen it this bad. I don't care anymore. Let's stop the madness. Stop it. Close the fucking door. Close the fucking door. It's an hour into dinner service, and with food coming back at a ridiculous rate... He hates it. Oh, come on. And Eric completely giving up... I don't care anymore. Chef Ramsay knows he is left with just one choice. Let's stop the madness. Stop it. Close the fucking door. Close the fucking door. Close the fucking door. It was his last shot, and he didn't perform. It's a serious problem. No lie, our chef walked out. They're shutting down the kitchen. After shutting down dinner service, Chef Ramsay calls an emergency meeting with the owners. You cannot continue like this. I'm trying my best. And I cannot work with no tools in there. He's a cook, but he's not a chef. There's a lot of money invested here. And if I have to choose between a future and a chef, I have to choose the business. He needs to go. We need a new kitchen leader. It was a no-brainer. Please give me a real chef. I am willing to bring a chef in here and pay personally for that chef to help turn this business around for the first month. But that's your decision. You can't ask for more than that. You're the owners, and it's your call. It's in the morning. We had to make a quick decision. We couldn't let her linger on. We had to rip the band-aid off, you know? Come outside. At this point in time, if I don't do something, it's not going to be here at all. I can't lose a million dollars. You know what? I think it's all fucking bullshit. We should go whatever direction we have to go in. What you got to do? That's all I can tell you. What you got to do? We 
gotta move on, my friend. If my shit's not good enough, let him find somebody else, because I'm fucking done with it. It's time for a 360, you know? Getting rid of Eric, it was tough. But what's best for the restaurant is the way I'm gonna go. He's not the only thing that has to change here. He definitely is not the only thing. I need to get back on my feet and start paying attention to the business. And Joe does also. It's got to be becoming about keeping this place open and money. Joe and I need to keep this place going. Give it a golden opportunity. With Chef Eric now out of the picture, Chef Ramsay is ready to present his plan for the new PJs. How are we feeling? Great. It's been a tough week, yes? Time to put all that aside. This is not just a new chapter. This is a new book. Are you ready? Yes? The steakhouse has closed. PJ's Grill is now open. Look <laughs> at that. <laughs> That's beautiful. Inviting, sumptuous, rich, is clear. PJ's Grill. I think it's a wonderful idea. I think it's perfect for the neighborhood. Right, should we go inside? Yeah. Yes? Let's go. The important part of keeping PJs, absolutely <gasps> crucial. Oh, my God, Joe. This area here is dedicated to him. Now it has a proper meaning. And more importantly, what a lovely tribute. It's beautiful. It brought a tear to my eye, you know? It's a good reminder of why this place is called PJ's. I feel PJ's presence here today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Madeline, Joe, two seconds. Want to introduce you to your new chef. This is Mark, Mark Hi. Elliott, Madeline, the owner. Lovely to meet you. And Mark. Joe, the owner. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, we're excited Good. to Mark have you. Likewise, Mark. I'm just so excited. I just can't wait to taste his food. I just can't wait to see the reaction of the customers. He knows his food inside out, and he knows how to cook. Let me tell you that. <laughs> yeah, it's a long story I'll explain later. <laughs> just having someone new and professional with ideas in this restaurant, it'll motivate and turn things around. With Joe and Madeline embracing Chef Ramsay's plan, right. he now introduces the new menu for PJ's Grill. Time for some dramatic change with the food. I'm excited about this part. This is the bit that really gets me fired up. Quick run through the menu, yes? Small, fresh, casual, and more importantly, fast. Irish stew, chicken scallopini, classic, OK? Steak Fred, we're a grill. So we've got the most amazing grill, the most amazing steak Fred. OK, happy? Good. Madeline, I need two seconds with you, please. Sure. Yeah? Come with me, my darling. Good. Excellent. It's one last change what i need to see from you tonight more than anything is just walk with the customers i want the burden off your shoulders tonight and the only way around that okay was to bring in someone very special and he's someone i trust with my restaurant this man handles 250 staff a day and he's here tonight to help you Hello, Aaron. Hi, 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 how, are you? Nice how are you how are you sir good when you're worried about what's going to happen next or what to say next or how to handle that situation, there's your buffer. Don't be scared to ask questions and get out there with it. OK? All right. Chef Ramsay loans his manager to train me. Is this unbelievable? I only hope we perform with the faith he's given us, you know? Otherwise, that's the end of it. It's the big night, and this restaurant has been transformed in 24 hours from a steakhouse to a neighborhood grill. Even though Chef Ramsay has brought in a new chef. OK. Yeah, we chef. Feeling good. And his own manager. OK. Are we all set? PJ's fate still rests with Madeline and Joe. You know, it's a fantastic face and make him a nice smile. Just make sure we keep them talking and don't leave them kind of standing there staring at you. This is a huge night for PJ's because people are coming back here for the first time. They're going to sit down to hopefully a new Madeline and Joe. We need this launch to go well. Otherwise, you know, we'll have no choice. We'll have to close the door. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Welcome to PJ's. How are you guys doing? 
Yeah. Delighted yeah. to have you with us, okay? Enjoy your evening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thirty minutes into dinner service, a surprise guest from the past shows up. Hi, good evening. How are you? Welcome to PJ's. I know you. Do you? I do. When was the last visit to PJ's? Six months ago. I boycotted it. They never cooked the steak right. The service, terrible. If you have any problems, please ask for Madeline right away. Madeline. I was shocked that he's back for a surprise visit, and I hope that we won't disappoint him. Enjoy. Please. <laughs> this guy has a lot of negative feedback about the restaurant. Is this the young couple that just walked in, is it? Yes. Make sure Gordon and the chef know. Table 10. People might have eaten here before they were in your film, yep. actually. So previous customers, they complained last time they were here. So watch that ticket, yeah? Yeah. Let's go. Hi, how are you? I probably might recommend the mixed grill. The grill does look kind of interesting. We're going to try the uh, mixed grill. Thank you. All right, first order, stuffed mushrooms, house salad, house salad. Three of mixed grill. That's going to be the hit tonight, kids. So there are two different temperatures on one mixed grill. Yeah, Can I'm we... going to cut the steak in half and leave half of it in there a little bit longer. I love that flexibility. Music to my fucking ears. Thank you so much. You're welcome. How are we doing, guys? Very good. How's that stew? Good. You guys have to get this next time. We'll come back with this. This is awesome. With the kitchen functioning in a cohesive and professional manner. Isn't that good? Oh, that's good. Madeline, you won. Madeline is about to get her first of many lessons in proper management. Madeline. <laughs> What's wrong with this guy? It's ridiculous. Cut it out. Don't go. Please don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. That's it. That's your last break. I didn't get the break. I never left. OK, go chase your waiters. Let's find out. Come on. And it was following me everywhere. So we need to go find out the kitchen, what we have, what we don't have. There's no one there. Let's get back in. Let's check on this table four. I didn't realize how many places you had to be. OK, where are we going now with that? Uh... get a bus board. How was everything, guys? That was fine. Very good. Dinner service is off to a strong start. I'm going to find out what's happening with table 10. But the former customers, whose opinion signifies whether PJ's has really changed. Did you eat anything yet? Has yet to be served. You haven't been fed yet. I'll be right back. Before this critical customer walks out the door, Madeline must get her kitchen under control. Table 10, you haven't been fed yet. Dick, that actually went to table 9. Fucking hell. Who's sending food to the wrong tables, guys? Take care of it. Thank you, man. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, Jesus Christ, the mic. Table 10. We're just a little behind right now. OK, chef, they're starving. So they need something, and they need it now. Thank you, Mark. Let's go. Please take a breath. Take the pressure off. Don't worry. Working hard. Give me two minutes. You OK? Beautiful, baby. Flank steak, a slider, grilled chicken. Woo, that's beautiful. Yes. Come here, pick up. Mixed grill window. Let's not take this to the wrong table a second time, please. Really well handled with them. Really well handled in the kitchen. Thank you. Here we are. Hi, how are you? How's everything? It's really good now. I think it's going to be great. I hope this is going to be a place I can yeah, bring in. Thank you. They're happy with the new menu. They're happy with the food. He said he was definitely coming back. Oh, it makes me feel so good. So good. So please enjoy your dinner. Thank you. Yeah. Everyone loves everything, man. Hey, you know what? It's all for you, Joe. <laughs> You're a different person when you have confidence in your chef. Everybody is rocking and rolling. Nice job across the board. I was actually very proud to be uh, owner of PJ's Grill. Chef Ramsay's vision of PJ's Grill was realized. How'd you feel? Great. It was a team effort that was led by the new chef, Madeline, and Joe. Tonight? PJ's Grill served 90 customers who love the food and, more importantly, are coming back because they've had a great time. The difference just with a decent chef in the kitchen doing his job that he's paid to do, what a weight off your shoulders. But the most important thing is I saw two owners who were passionate, happy and dealing with their business. What Chef Ramsay's done here is incredible. I don't really know how he knew how to go to the heart of Joe, but he did. It's just been unreal. It's like I just got a, a fire back, you know? I haven't felt that way in a long time. This is the first time 
and a lot of years, I feel my brother's looking down on me, you know? Look over my shoulder. You can do it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night. During my stay here, it's been dark, rainy, and gloomy. And I'm not just talking about the weather. But based on what I saw tonight in this restaurant, I seriously hope that tomorrow the sun shines on PJ's Grill and into the future, because it deserves it. After Chef Ramsay left, PJ's business did improve. But after a great deal of thought, Joe and Madeline made the most difficult business decision of their life. They decided to close PJ's Grill and return to the construction business of their life. They decided to close PJ's Grill and return to the construction business. Ridgewood, New Jersey, an affluent suburb well known for the sheer volume of restaurants. Smack in the middle of this pleasant town is a five-year-old restaurant run by a former Manhattan star chef, Paul Bazzini. I'm a very good chef. We got a full dining room, drop another pan for four more. Here we go. I've always been in the industry and worked my way up and became executive chef and worked in many places in Manhattan that had a lot of notoriety. I love you. Oh, love you too. Paul has been recognized many times throughout his career. He has been written up in several magazines with some very positive reviews, and I absolutely thought the restaurant was going to be a success. But Paul never anticipated the transition from star chef to owner would be so difficult. I don't have any focus these days. I wake up in the morning and I say, what direction should I go in today? Should I cook? Should I shop? Should I work in the front of the house? Should I work on marketing? Should I pay bills? And it's like overwhelming. It's killing me. I think the pressure of owning the restaurant has definitely beat him down and his passion for food is not burning as brightly as it once was. Clearly what's going on with me in the kitchen is suffering. Here's your salad. What salad to what table? I'm confused. I'm confused. Yeah, yeah New York shift, New York shift, New York. Okay, you're, you're right. I am distracted. I am frustrated. I'm angry. Always somebody, always somebody, always somebody. And then I'm frustrated with the food, and I'm slamming plates on because the plate doesn't look the way that I want it to look. It's messy, but let's just right. go with it, okay? The risotto was burnt. I don't know, is it supposed to be spicy? A lot of complaints. Yeah, so I heard. I don't feel like me. I feel like somebody else. I feel like me looking at somebody else. Everyone knows that he's just not good about criticism. This needs to be heated up. These are perfect. OK. He gets pissed off and he yells. I don't have all the tickets memorized. Do I? Well, that's why you have a ticket. Yeah, OK. Do you think if you had a lot of money, you wouldn't be so goddamn moody? <sighs> I support the restaurant financially, certainly. If I didn't do that, we would have been bankrupt years ago. There's no magic ATM machine like in the backyard, like a magic money tree that I can just go pick money from. There are no college funds for our children. Every day, I'm scared that we're not going to be able to pay the bills. We need help. We need direction. We need advice. And my resume and all of my accolades don't mean a hill of beans if I can't make it work here. His passion for cooking defines him. And I feel like it's lost to him right now. He needs to get it back. over 60 restaurants within four blocks inside this beautiful town. Now, after seeing a few of them, my mouth is watering. I can't wait for lunch. Right, Bazzini's, innovative American cuisine. What? No. Am I too late? Bazzini's, hours, Monday to Thursday, 5 till 9.30. Shit. No lunch? That's ridiculous. Hi, Paul Gordon here. Where are you? Call me. Unbelievable. Hello? Hi, may I speak to Chef Ramsay, please? Is that Paul? Hi, this is Paul Bazzini. How are you? Sorry, I missed you. I didn't realize you were closed for lunch. Uh, yes, sir. We're closed for lunch. OK, I'm on my way. I'm starving. How are you? Hi, welcome to Bazzini's. Chef Ramsay, pleasure to meet you. Gordon. Gordon, Paul, pleasure to meet you. Nice to see you too. Thank wow, you. Wow, this is minute, isn't it? It's challenging. <laughs> my goodness me. Is this it? Yes, sir. 
Wow. It's like being inside a doll's house. It, it, it's uh, some decor challenges here. Well, you're here. Yes, sir. Finally, I'm here. Okay. Um, uh, clearly, there's nothing else going on uh, lunch-wise. Why don't you cook me something? Okay. Yeah. Don't show me the menu. You decide. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have to just, you know, focus on like the food. Will it be to his taste? Will it be to his opinion? Who knows? This place makes me feel nervous. It's small. It's cramped and. I wanted the clothes for lunch. Oh, so narrow. Look at this place. From one table to the next. Huh? Oof. God, they're grimy. Oh, shit. That's depressing. Oof. <laughs> Entree comes with sound effects. Maybe he'll blow me away with the food because the atmosphere. Mm. My God, it's depressing. I'm thinking that I want to send out just a, 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 just a few light dishes to him. Something hot, something cold, something grilled, something sautéed. Just a, a full rounded experience. Hey, Paul. I'm here yes. to help. Hey, how's it going? What do you got? Good. I think Chef Ramsay's going to have a lot of things to say to Paul about how to change things, and I don't think Paul's going to take it well. The gentleman said he was very hungry, so... Fair enough. I think Paul has his own ideas that what he's doing is just right, doesn't need to be changed, and, uh... I think some of those things do need to be changed. Here we go. That is the fettuccine. Mm -hmm. Basil arugula pesto, a little mm -hmm. ricotta salada on top. Nice. And then behind that, here is a chicken paillard, a sort of milanese, pounded, mm -hmm. breaded. Excellent. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't catch your name. My name's Alex. Alex. Charmed. Good to see you so much. My pleasure. I'll be back in a moment. Thank you, Alex. Cold. Bland. Really bland. OK. Look at this thing. It's like a fucking elephant's foot. Mm. That's not normal for a chicken to be so fucking hard. Fuck. That's the mess. Thank you, Alex. Absolutely. Um, I'd appreciate if the chef could actually taste that. OK. Because it is bland beyond bland. OK. And um, why is that so dry? Hmm. I wish I had a good answer for that question. Chicken should be moist. Well, I'll move straight to the next course. Thank sure. you. Fettuccine. Bland. Chicken. Why is it so dry? That's bullshit. I want to go home. Paul certainly doesn't like it when people criticize his food, but I, you know, I think he actually reacted to Chef Ramsay's criticisms the same way he reacts to a lot of the guests' criticisms. Like, maybe it's not necessarily that important, because he's right. Hello. Hello. How are you? Very well. I'm Leslie Bazzini. Nice to see you, darling. Nice to see Just you. Li likewise. Thank you for coming. Not at all, I really Leslie. appreciate your help. It means a lot to us that you're here. Not I don't want to get emotional, but thank you. I'm very happy to be here, and, uh... Can I give you a hug? Of course you can have a hug. There we are. Feel better? Yeah. Here is someone who has the ability to help us, and, um, he's going to. You know, that's a miracle. OK, great. Well, I'm going to finish my uh, lunch. Yes, absolutely. Thank um, you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Alex. Hello. Lovely. Thank you. Here we are. OK, that is our mushroom risotto. Mm-hmm. Thank you. OK. Damn, is that normal? Amazing Bazzini's risotto. Ooh, well, that's extraordinary, no? Doesn't even move. Well, maybe that'll look better up there. Yeah. It fits the colours. Absolutely disgusting. So, you don't look too impressed. I just taste of mush. Thank you, Alex. Well, yeah. My pleasure. I'll bring you some tilapia next. Mm -hmm. Nah, he doesn't like that. He doesn't like it? <laughs> too mushy. There is a classic, you know, way to do it, but some people around here just don't like it that way, you know? My ego is not here to hear that Gordon Ramsay loved the dishes or didn't like the dishes. I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about what I do and how, what the product that, that I put out. It's all yours, Alex. All right, here we go. Thank you. Almond crusted tilapia, jasmine rice with some pepper. Hopefully you enjoy it. Wow. Look at her. Uh, boo. Huh? I love the jasmine rice. He has to like the jasmine rice. Hmm? It's just so bland, honestly. I mean, it's just greasy, bland, and you cut into the fish and it's just mush. 
Now, how is the tilapia coming along? Are we making some forward progress here? Yeah, no, I'm, do you know what? I'm, uh, I'm still hungry. Um, do you have something in mind? Uh, any desserts? Certainly. Sharon, our dessert chef, makes everything. I've got, got a carrot cake. Oh, wow. Should be a New York cheesecake. Do you know what? A little slice of the cheesecake and the carrot cake. Done. Please. Yes. Cheesecake, carrot cake, tilapia, no go. Fish was bland. Watery. Fish was bland? Again, we're, we're kind of like, we have an older clientele here. They like nod to assertive okay. things. Right. How could I think that Paul did a good job? You know, if he did a good job, Chef Ramsay would have said the food was great. You know, he didn't say that, so Paul didn't do a good job. We'll start right here with a carrot cake. Wow, all homemade. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Hi. Gordon's eating your carrot cake right now as yeah, we speak. Oh, oy vey. The last thing that people eat is dessert. And if the dessert sucks, that's bad. Oh, you scared me. Don't come around the corner like that. Sharon. <laughs> Sharon. First of all, that is delicious. Awesome. Now, whose recipe is that? Mine. Can I have it? No, for a price. Everything for a price. For a price. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. That's made with passion. As much as you have. You make love to that carrot cake, you, don't you? Well, I'm getting divorced, so it's the cake or... Uh... <laughs> I'll go for the cake. Hope he likes it, Sharon. It's going to be devastated if he hates it. I hate it. I'm so glad you liked it. Honestly, I felt like it's a fucking wake in a funeral, and all of a sudden the carrot cakes arrive and woof, I'm back up there. I love you! Uh <laughs> <laughs> Although dessert left Chef Ramsay with a good taste in his mouth, it still doesn't erase the bad taste of the rest of the meal. Let's talk about the food. Dessert. Let's get backwards. OK. <laughs> yeah. That was delicious. Good. Glad yeah. you enjoyed it. Really good. Yeah, um, sure. Great way to finish. Clearly, but I certainly didn't start off like that. I said to you, show me your best. Give it to me big time. The risotto was embarrassing. Paul, it tasted the way it looked. Damn, is that normal? Bland, mushy, and it looked atrocious. Honestly, it was fucking disgusting. The chicken, how many days were you baking that for? Seriously, I mean, you may laugh, but it's not funny. Honestly, I thought I'd lost my tooth. It was so crunchy on the outside. Dry in the middle. It wasn't intended to be dry or to be overcooked. Uh, you sent it out. I know that. That's the way you normally cook it, overdone. Yeah. Certainly don't think that I cook food overdone. OK. I mean, it's Risotto not overcooked, intent. chicken overcooked. You certainly did for me. OK. I, I need to get some fresh air. I'm going to come back later. I'm here tonight. Show it to me. OK. Hopefully this time with a little bit more effort. OK. Did you think that he was going to like it? It angers me that Paul has given up because I haven't given up. You're like dead. Well, I want the nightmare to be over. This former Manhattan star chef failed to impress Chef Ramsay at lunch. Now it's time for Chef Ramsay to see how Paul handles the customers of Ridgewood, New Jersey in a dinner service. All right, guys, we got to get ready. I hope Paul could get his shit together. The food is there, the capability is there. You just have to do it. It's like you have to shit or cut off the pot. Hello, good evening. Can I take your wine? You may. Let me just add him. There you go. Thank you. And this is Al. Al, good to nice see you. To meet you. You're a sous chef, right? Yes. This kitchen's like a fucking shoebox in here. Oh, yeah, I know. Holy crap. I think Chef Ramsay doesn't realize that I worked with a lot of very well-known chefs. It's not intimidating. I have the talent, the desire, and I definitely can do the job. Crab cakes across the board, so for this risotto. You smell good. I smell good. Aftershave. Sharon, are you hitting on me? No, I like no? the aftershave. It smells nice. Oh, you have just brushed your ass off me. No, I'm not. Gordon is adorable. And of course, he's not quite the butt. <laughs> I'm sorry. Order in. The crab cakes are ready. OK, thank you. How come they're cooked already? They're pre-seared. You what sear the... a crab cake? No. We pre-sear the crab cake, and then it goes into the oven. No, hold on a minute. Why wouldn't you do that to order? For it to expedite it out a little bit faster. But surely it'll take longer to get yes. hotter once already cooked. I, yes. Is it me or does that not make sense? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Here is your crab cake, sir. May I get you any fresh pepper on that? Uh, no, thank you. No? How strange. 
How are they doing in the kitchen? There's a bucket of crab cakes that just go into the oven to be reheated. But they were seared off like yesterday. Did you know they were done there the day before? Of course not. No. I thought everything was fresh. Everything. I feel like Paul is losing his artistry and that he doesn't care. It's not affecting him. It not only pains me, it, it angers me, quite frankly. I mean, that's just not OK. It's all burned on the side. All I can taste is the, is the food is burned. Is it really? Is everything OK with your crab cakes, sir? It's not burned. It's over. OK. Yeah, let me get that back to you. No problem. I need another crab cake on the fly. What do they say? I was burnt. Burnt? Yeah, there's two more. We're about to go out. Please tell me you're not going to serve them. No, I'm not, Chef. We had issues with the crab cakes tonight. It's not the right way to do it. It should be done a different way. And I know how to do it a different way. But that's not how it was done. That it's not. It's fucking not. disgusting. Yes, it do is. something about it, please, yes. Paul. Okay. Yeah? He's a garbage. This is not a reflection of the way that I want things to be, OK? So how are we going back there, right? I'll go check for you. <laughs> it's an hour into dinner service, and very little food has left the kitchen. So, around 29 of bread. So hungry. In order to get an accurate picture of the slowdown... That's not ready? There's no potatoes on it, honey, OK? Chef Ramsay times how long cooked food sits at the pass. I just think I eat, like, nine loaves of bread just sitting here waiting for our food. OK, four minutes. That's that. Bam, steak. Oh, that's still there. Yes, I'm working on everything. Everything is working. Hey, let me bring some food out there. I, yeah, but she have her. Yeah. Paul is communicating, but most of his communication is that he can't handle it and it's going too fast. <laughs> You're gonna have to leave though. Yeah, no, all talking about it. Yeah, I know. It's a good point. It is a little bit. Like a little, yeah. Okay, these people are gonna leave if I don't get this one out. He decides how fast things come out. I don't know why it takes so long. I just know it takes so long. They have to be sat there. That makes it funny. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And, okay. OK, table 32 can now go. Thank you. You're welcome. Finally. Yes. And now, after a long wait, Those potatoes look a little overdone. The customers cold. aren't satisfied. OK, no problem. I'll send that back for you. OK, thank you. No problem. Paul? What's wrong? Uh, it's cold. Oh, come on. Oh, it's the light. I've certainly become annoyed with clients, and I feel like, you know, people that want to give you criticism, they just don't know, like, what you're going through, and if they just knew, like, a little bit of what you were going through, they might be a little bit more compassionate, but it's not a compassionate business. Is this going, Paul? I'm just worried about food coming back cold, and this is sat here. I was told that the salads would be ready. I'm waiting for the salads. Take half of that salad off, please. What are you building, a fucking Christmas tree? Half of that. No, half. The plates don't look the way they should when I don't do them. Well, when I put them... Just take half of the salad off, please. Follow my directions. I'm going to help you, OK? I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to help you. Contrary to what everybody says, I do know a few fucking things. Oy vey. Easy to sum up Paul's moods. If he were a woman, he would have PMS 24-7, OK? So let me demo a chicken milanese for the 400th fucking time, which is nothing more than chicken and salad, and my 12-year-old can fucking do it. Yeah, listen, don't push it, Paul. When I don't put it high enough, you yell at me that it's not freaking high enough. Why do you have to make it so difficult for it? Why, can't we, why, no, can't, why, why can't we just finish this chicken milanese and make this particular chicken milanese a right one? Not talking about okay, yesterday, Paul. not All talking right. about next month, but what's with the fucking sarcasm? Why how about, can't how about, happen if you tell me you do it one fucking way? How about seven, then you change it. Why do you have to make it so difficult for it? Uh -huh. Why can't we? The battle to get food out tonight has resulted in a war in the kitchen. And make, but what's with the fucking sarcasm? What the fuck you want from me? And the impact is being felt in the dining room. Get my food now. Who's waiting for um, one? 34 has been waiting for like an hour. I know. So. This big table behind me, what are they waiting on? Whose table is that? Uh, Julie's. How long are they waiting on trays? Over an hour. Yeah, it's all over an hour. This is not normal, surely. No. no. Tonight is the worst dinner service that I have ever seen. I mean, I have never experienced anything like this in my life. OK, uh, Paul. Yes, sir. I don't know what's happened, but the level of frustration out there is intense. Okay. So stop. We can't continue like this. Stop it. Will you apologize to the tables, please, Rebecca? What a freaking disaster. Bad, I know. 
It was a terrible night. We had people not get food when tickets were here. We failed, and I, it's my responsibility. Sorry, my friends. The kitchen has no. been shut down. I'm so sorry. I've never had to do this before. I've never saw anything like that in my life. I understand that. Do you think that I like this? Do you think that I want it to be like this? I don't. But. But what? I'm one person with two hands. Paul, you don't. Please don't start with excuses. That's not going to help. Paul had a horrible night, 100% off his game, and I think gave up before he even got started. But people hated the food. Well, that's not what we got back here. <sighs> I'm very angry saying that someone liked something. 50 people didn't like it. Open your eyes. I have nothing else to say to you. Equally as miserable as tonight's dinner service was Paul's attitude, and Chef Ramsay wants to know why. Tonight showed me that you hated cooking. I cannot ignite that little button. Jeff. I need to see it from you. Jeff, I feel awful. I, this is not the way that I want to work or the way that I know that I can work. Why are you doing it to yourself? I, I... Why? You've got like... to give me the answer because I can't start helping until you tell me. But I mean... No one's asking you to rant and rave. I'm just asking you to have some fire. It's not normal for a guy that's been cooking for 20 years plus to stand there with no feel or passion and send shit like that as if it's just going over your head. Whether you like it or not, you have given up. Your whole family is on the line here. Do you know how hard it is to look at my kids when I go home at night? Or my wife? It's not easy, OK? supposed to be easy. I don't care if it's not easy. I just want it to be better. But don't stop trying. Think I'm happy? I'm miserable. I don't want to get out of bed in the morning. I want to stay in bed. OK, listen. I'm committed to helping you, and I'm not leaving this place until it's set. We are going to work at this together at turning this around. Tomorrow, I want you at your best. Yes? Yes. Get some sleep. Thank you. Good night. Good night. After an emotionally draining night, Chef Ramsay has a task in mind to help ignite Paul's passion in the kitchen. Good morning. Hello. Uh, new day, new attitude, new start. So, last night, it took us an hour, on average, to get appetizers out. So here's what we're doing today. I want you to get used to the time pressure. You see what I'm saying? Like, sort of, you know, yeah. kick-starting the fucking car again, oh, you know, like, a new battery <laughs> in it. You've got 15 minutes yep. from now yep. to cook me oh, a stunning yeah. pasta dish. Off you go. Oh, you love it. Trying to kill me. You can do it, huh? 15 minutes. Go, no, Paul. No. <laughs> In order for Paul to impress Chef Ramsay, this chef is making fresh pasta for the first time in five years. I just want to be able to do what I know how to do it. Just, you know, just cook from the heart and uh, get back to raising the bar for myself. What are you going to make? I'm just getting a lay of the land. That's you all. Yeah, 14 minutes. And the clock is ticking, and it's just, you know, like everything around me was just turned off. Like I wasn't hearing or seeing or feeling or worrying. It was just, you know, I was living in the moment. 10 minutes, babe. He's sitting, he's ready, he's waiting to be served. You can totally, totally wow him right now, please. I was watching everything that he did, and I was definitely afraid that Chef Ramsay wasn't going to like it and, and what that would mean. Can we carry it out? I'll carry it out. You sure you want to do that? Yes. All right. Hey. Here we go. Chef. Thank you. You're welcome. We have a capellini pasta with a chunky puntanesca sauce and some rock shrimp. Lovely. Well, I used to be a good chef. I think I'm still a good chef. I would just want him to be able to recognize that there was a, a passion that went into making this. Chef Ramsay has put Paul's passion for cooking to the test. We have a capellini pasta with a puntanesca sauce. Lovely. Now it's time to find out if he passed. I would hope that Chef Ramsay would recognize that, you know, some love went into making this dish. Will it be to his taste? Who knows? Mmm. That's nice. Capellini. 
took perfectly. Thank you. Yeah, it just felt good to just have a really positive comment from Chef Ramsay. I really needed that lift. What does pasta mean to you? To me, it's like bread, it's Steph of life. Mm -hmm. Pasta can be anything. You can go through all different flavors, textures, yep. proteins, colors. You yep. can have dried pasta, fresh pasta. It's a blank canvas. It's, you know, it's, it's just something for yep. the artist to paint. You sounded more exciting in the last two minutes talking about pasta than you have done since I've met you. It was the old Paul. He was excited, he was energized. It was the man that I married. And it's really weird, isn't it? It takes something like a pasta dish to sort of ignite how you feel about it. Absolutely. Today, at this moment, I know that, like, the healing process has begun. After a small glimmer of hope this morning, Chef Ramsay wants to try an experiment. Time for some sophisticated marketing. He wants to take advantage of the Ridgewood foot traffic and test Paul's speed in the kitchen. How are you? So for the first time in four years, Bazzini's is open for lunch. Having lunch today? Fabulous lunch menu around the corner. Bazzini's, $15. Soup salad and the most amazing pasta. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now Chef Ramsay only has one thing left to do. Tell the owners. So here's what we're doing today. We're going to serve the most amazing two-course lunch. That's right. This is not a formal, long-winded, three-hour ordeal. This is a really nice, easy, quick, vibrant lunch. I'm nervous, but you know, this is what we're gonna do today, fantastic. You know, great, but, you know, terrific. You and I in the kitchen? Great. I'm your sous chef. Okay, fantastic. I'm your bitch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ladies, you've both got great personalities, so both of you running the front of house. I don't know anything about the front of the house. I don't care about the front of the house. I just wanna do my job. Great service, great food, in and out. Uh, follow me, please. Chef Ramsay is hoping today's lunch will show Paul and Leslie the opportunity they are not taking advantage of. Don't have the pasta special. The Fantina pasta. And the power of serving fresh pasta. Soup three, panzanella two. OK, good, let's go. Two soups are going in the window, chef, to go up with two salads. Salads, 30 seconds, Paul. Very good, thank you. Don't forget. Speed today, yes? Yep. Order in one soup, two orecchiette. Two panzanella. Three vegetable orecchiette, three regular orecchiette. Very good. Oh, waitressing is totally not my thing. I'll be right with you, folks. You girls okay? We're just waiting on our wine. Oh. Um, garlic. Oh, my pen's not writing. I'm sorry. Sharon and I are not servers. We did the best that we could. Is everything okay? We get spoons too. Oh yes, I'm sorry. But we forgot that you need a spoon to eat soup. Where's the spoon? Why are you asking me? Oh, God help me. Oops. I'm sorry. Service. Manage with that. Thank you. That looks great. Enjoy it. Next on tray is what? Two orecchiettes, one vegetarian orecchiette. It was great working with Gordon Tate. You know, we worked together, we jumped around. It was good. It was like a good two-man, you know, vibe. It felt good, you know? It felt real good. With Chef Ramsay and Paul working together. You got four vegetarian, I got five normal, yes? Four vegetarian on the way. Excellent. Beautifully cooked fresh pasta is flying out of the kitchen. Thank you very much. Enjoy it. There you go. Gosh, this is so good. So this is like the best pasta I've ever played. Friends and stuff your mom makes. And you're in and out in no time? Mm-hmm. How is it? Very good. Good. Very good. Very good. Very good. good, I'm glad. The kitchen did everything right today. That's it. The board is cleared, yeah? Yeah. I don't have any tickets. You're Anyone good need to food? Go. No food. I absolutely think lunch should be an everyday thing at Bazzini. I think that uh, today probably proved that to Paul. It was a great lunch service. It was really good. It was profitable, and we, we, you know, we made money, and uh, customers were happy, and it was quick, and it was easy. Feel good. Inspired by Paul's performance during lunch and his fresh pasta, Chef Ramsay and his team work overnight to renovate the restaurant. Morning. Hey, hey morning. morning. Welcome to the new Pazzini. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Look at it. New trellising, new sign. It looks inviting. It's gorgeous. The neighborhood with 60 restaurants, you have to stand out. It looks spectacular. Awesome. The trellis just looks beautiful. Ready to go inside? Yes. yes. Let's go. I have ants in my pants. Oh, oh my, my God. God. 
Look at this. The tables are gorgeous. I love these tchotchkes. Look at that. That's that awesome. That's so nice. Gone is a lemon pound cake on the walls. New slick Italian bonquettes. Is that lovely? It's just modern. It looks great. The color is contemporary. Look at the napkins. Fresh wow. pasta made daily. Welcome to Bazzini. It's freaking awesome. The dining room is beautiful. I never thought in a million years this could happen. And um, we are so grateful. Thank you again. Thank you. Oh, good one, darling. I'm glad you're happy. The restaurant renovation was drastic, but the biggest change to Bazzini's is the menu. Chef Ramsay has taken the old risotto, the disgusting chicken, and the bland tilapia, and replaced them with a new and vibrant menu, featuring fresh pasta. Love the menu. From 27 dishes down to 15. Why is it reduced? Because it's fast. The idea is everything's cooked to order. It's fresh. Char-grilled calamari with fresh chili and arugula. The main entree is bistecca. Fresh caponata with white beans. Pasta today is going to be tagliatelle of mussels and clams. That's the hallmark, Paul. Is that menu manageable? Yep. Looking at the menu, the bar is set at the 10, and we need to be able to get as high to the 10 as possible. Certainly nothing less than an 8 and a half. Dessert, Sharon. Carrot cake, look at it. Beautiful, sumptuous, sexy, and something you want to take home to bed. <laughs> Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> what? Take home to bed. Oh, boy. Phew. You're killing me. Hello, welcome. You are Panera. Panera. With the new menu and the new decor in place. Follow me, please. Chef Ramsay has invited VIPs and dignitaries to show why Bazzini's is special, even amongst the 60 restaurants in town. Let's see what this new menu offers us. All pastas fresh, made here on the premises today. We have the calamari to start out. Calamari to start out, excellent. First order, yes? Yeah, one polenta, one calamari? Yes, chef. Yeah, one tortellini? Yes, chef. One tagliatelle? Al, I would get the calamari working, OK? OK. I want to try and get a little bit more color on it. Tickets coming in. I'm not thinking about, am I going to be able to do it? I'm not thinking about, oh my god, we're going to crash. It's about me pushing myself to be the person that I am. Tonight, Paul's attitude couldn't be better. Get like four more plenty's working, please. And everything in the kitchen seems to be right on track. This is table number 21, chef. Okay, good. Now, the first appetizers are at the pass. Hey, guys, it's raw here. Touch that. I can't send out raw calamari, yeah? Paul, please. Yes, chef. It's fucking raw. My God. Make sure everything's cooked. Paul, these tables are very okay. important. I need a second to think. Oh, come on. Al, you got to, come on. I need help. I need you to get in the game with me. Please, I, I can't do it all alone. Al, please tell me about polenta. Please tell me about polenta. I know what's on the line. I know we got dignitaries in the diner. We have to get the job done. We have to get it done well. We have to just get it done. Get an order in. It's table 21. Guys, I can't cook and talk and manage the tickets. I need help. I'm not working alone here. Well, it was a total disaster. He got flustered, I guess, and there was a lack of communication. The pressure of relaunch night has clearly gotten to Paul, his sous chef Al, and the rest of the kitchen staff. No, we're not firing at the moment. And 45 minutes in, not a single entree has left the kitchen. We speak so highly of the fresh pasta, you guys didn't bring it out. Yes. Talk to me, Paul, please. OK, I'm 24. Tortellini, tag special. It's only a two top, yeah? But, Chef, I want to get this four pastas out first. Yeah, I know, but what I'm trying to say yes, to you is yes. it's the same dish. Put a four and a two top together, kill two birds with one stone. Position yourself. Absolutely. Manipulate yeah. the board to your advantage. Yeah. Come on. An hour and a half later. Of course. We're hungry. Yeah, this is, this is I'm sorry. Oh, wait, it's an hour and I absolutely minutes. understand. Well, I hate to say it, but 33 has been waiting forever. I mean, they were one of the first tables that walked in this door. Everything is a complete mess. Nobody's getting their food. The orders are all mixed up. It's just unbelievable out there. These VIP tables, yeah, are waiting too long. I need some help. I need someone to move tickets. I can't do everything I myself. Need some communication. We need to fucking cook. We're sinking like the Titanic in here. Let's just cook! This is such a shame. Paul shut down, he's not communicating, and more importantly, I think he's given up. God sakes. Come on, Paul! Paul! I'm doing 400 things at once. I'm trying to do damage control at this point. Damage control is not what I want to do at this point. I want to cook, I want to get food out, I want, you know, clearly I need some help. 41. I need to know how long. I need someone to tell me what 41 is. Don't have eyes in the back of my head. OK. What's our ETA on 45, Paul? Al, talk to Al. Guys, 
Please stop cooking! 45 and I still don't have an answer on 41. Oh, for Christ's sake. This table's been waiting for an hour. Can't do it all. I, I got this, I don't know that for sure. Well, I've been waiting for, like, Everybody here is waiting. Hey, don't shush me. We're all working together here. I, I, we don't I, need a shusher. Guys, this is the most important night of this guy's life. Quit the arguing! Everything crashed. I don't know if it's the Titanic or the Hindenburg, but it's a fucking mess. All right, I know you don't want to hear this, but I need a pasta special and I need it immediately. Bloody hell, where's Al? Where's my sushi? There's only one in this kitchen. Oh. Al! Al! Where is Al? I don't know. Where the fuck is Al? We don't know. He's gone. No sign of him. He's clearly gone. God's sakes, man. Al! Al! It's relaunch night at Pizzini's, and not only are customers getting restless... An hour and a half later... Of course. We're hungry. But sous chef Al has gone AWOL. Where's Al? Where's my sous chef? Al! Al! I think he quit. I was shocked that Al walked out. That really sucks. There was a shock wave that went through the kitchen, the service staff. No one could really believe it. Come on, guys, please. Just left high and dry like that, it's a little difficult. Listen to me, Al may be gone, but the customers need feeding. Let's support one another. But as a human being with compassion, you go in, you help, and you give it your best shot. All right, take a deep breath. I'm glad to help. If you cook the garnishes, I can cook the lamb, the strip. Yes? Yes, chef. Let's go then. I can only imagine what's Brilliant. happening in that kitchen back there. Start working on three tag, two pepperoncini straight after, yes? Yes, chef. Good. I'll do the risotto. Sharon, see so you with me? I'm totally with you. Sharon, congratulations, and a new sous chef. I'm very embarrassed. Our sous chef walked out. It's not even full, it's too tight. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's like stodge, yeah? Good girl, Sharon. Thank you, chef. Good girl. Let's go. Talk to me. Come on, Paul, please. I'm one minute from dressing. I'm one minute from dressing. Chef, I'm working. It's still going to be a few minutes. I apologize. Tag special in the window. Good girl. Thank you, Sharon. Service, please. To save tonight's dinner service, Chef Ramsay has taken over the kitchen. Come back for the risotto, please. And along with Sharon's help... Well done, Sharon. Food is now entering the dining room. As can you shall sometimes in time receive. But now the question is, do the customers feel it was worth the wait? The food is fantastic. Worth the wait. Risotto has a wonderful taste. Mm -hmm. Great oh, risotto. The chicken is delicious. Right? We had some challenges, you know? We had some things that weren't expected to happen. But that said, everyone stepped up as best as they could, got good feedback from the people. So, you know, <clears throat> I feel it was success. Before I spend some time, with Paul and Leslie, I just want to say um, a big thank you. Yeah, your desserts are fantastic. Over the desserts, your personality is, for me, fundamental to the longevity and the potential success of this restaurant. And I just want to say uh, a big thank you. Well done, my darling. Yeah. Oh, ay, 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 ay. I enjoyed his company. I think he enjoyed mine, and I hope I made him proud. Thank you. Because I really tried very hard. Right, that wasn't easy. No. No, nowhere near it. Uh, however, I know the customers love the food. Absolutely. Yeah? And tonight confirmed that you have an identity. Mm -hmm. The fresh pasta is out there. But, truthfully, as hard as this is for me to say to you face to face, honestly, Paul, you haven't changed enough to convince me that this can turn around. I was totally focused and totally committed. No, 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 no. You weren't, Paul. Jeff. No, no, come on, big boy. The first appetizer had raw squid. Not slightly seared, raw. 20 minutes later, the place was sunk. You needed me. I regrouped, got the kitchen back together. I've never worked this hard in launching a restaurant. The truth hurts, Paul. You've got to start telling yourself some serious home truths. The way to becoming a better chef is to realize your weaknesses and improve those weaknesses. I've taken all of the advice, and I've taken a lot of it to heart, and I've seen a lot of it of what I do is wrong. Here's my advice. At the heart of this restaurant has to be you, your food, you on the plate. You have to stand up 
to the plate and hold the reins. I know that it starts and stops with me, and I know that I have to be the leader, and I know that I have to command the troops, and I take responsibility for so that. You say all the right things always, but now it's time to do the right things. Right. Can I thank you? Can I think that Chef Ramsay came in and really identified the problems, and I think he certainly helped Paul, and I totally feel that all the tools we have are enough to save the restaurant. Chef. Yes, Chef. Good luck. Thank you very much. Yes. Appreciate everything. Appreciate all your hard Chris. work and, and everything you've done for me. It's over to you now. I yeah. won't let you down. This experience has been amazing. I've been put on the path to success, but I'm really excited about going forward. Please, don't let yourself down. Thanks very much. Good night. Good night. What a week. Ridgewood may have 60 restaurants within four blocks, but I do believe the new Bazzini's, with its fresh pasta, can be a huge local success. Unfortunately, I'm just not sure about Paul, but nothing would make me happier if you could prove me wrong. After Gordon's departure, Paul immediately hired a strong sous chef. And with the new fresh pasta identity, Bazzini's experienced a boost in business. Oh, it's very good. White House Station, New Jersey, a quaint village surrounded by rich farmland. It's a popular place for New York commuters to live. Bill and Adele ran successful diners here for decades. We made with the previous businesses, approximately a million dollars. I said, that's it, I'm retired, I'm done, I'm finished. Hey, Charlie. It was nice. When we retired, by the third day, I was bored. But in 2006, they came out of retirement to open their first fine dining restaurant with their daughter, Cheryl. We love Florida. We love the tropical atmosphere. So I thought Florida hyphen mangoes. Flamingos. They wanted to be kind of a um, high class restaurant. And it's hideous, hideous beyond belief. This restaurant is very poorly run. We know we have big problems here. Adele doesn't respect us. Girls, we know! Adele tells me to shut up, and she's actually cursed. Shut your mouth already, asshole! Hey. Adele is crazy. Go! Go! All right, here I go. I do the steak, I do the raw bar. I do it all the maintenance. It's really hard. I get really upset when I see Bill having to overwork like that. This man should be retired. I think they said medium. Medium rare. Medium rare. The food here is fabulous. You haven't served that time, are you? Yep. I've been a chef of flamingos for about four weeks. The food right now, it's less than mediocre. I definitely wish I could redesign the menu, but they don't want me to change anything. That what do you want me to do? Flamingos is doing lousy, and we don't know why. I can't sleep at night because I think of all the money we spent that would have been our retirement money. Taxes are coming up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see us out in the street almost. If this goes belly up, I could lose everything. How am I going to start over? I can't think of anyone else that could help us but Gordon Ramsay. I mean, he cuts right through the shit, and we are in deep shit. White House Station, New Jersey. Not exactly the New Jersey I know. Look at this place. I'm here to visit a restaurant called Flamingos. It's a long time before lunch, so I'm going to visit the family at home rather than go straight to the restaurant. Oh, the smell of manure is strong. Wow. That was a road and a half. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Chef Ramsay. Uh, Gordon, please. Good I'm to see good. you. Bill, yes? Bill, yes. Good to meet you, sir. How old are you? I am 70. You look great for 70. You know that. Thank you. Huh? 
And you're setting this up for a few years' time for retirement, or what? Well, I'm supposed to be retired now, but I bought a restaurant instead. <laughs> and now I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> you honestly came out I came out of retirement. To open a restaurant. To open a restaurant. Oh, I had restaurants before. I had about four of them before. Uh -huh. And I made a lot of money with them. But this one is... I don't know what's the matter with it. I need Chef Ramsay's help to try to make this a successful restaurant for Cheryl and Adele. I'd like you to meet Chef Ramsay. How are you? Hello. Go on. Oh, nice to see you, my darling. And I... The big question for me is, you had a restaurant. Yes. Yeah, we started a diner. So then you sell them, you go into retirement. Right. Mm -hmm. Why would you come out of retirement to buy another restaurant? We wanted to do this as a family. Yeah. My daughter, Cheryl, and myself. Would you like to meet Cheryl? Please. Cheryl! Hello. Yeah. Good to meet you. Good to Likewise, meet you as well. Is... Now, do you just pop over for a slice of cake? No, I live here. You live here? <laughs> yes. How old are you? I'm 42 years old. Same age as me. I left mum 24 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> what are you still doing here? I haven't had a paycheck in two years. I have to live home. My daughter, Cheryl, she's still living with us. But she doesn't bring anyone home. No guys. Forget that. OK. Should we get to the restaurant? Sure. Let me drive you there. Let's go on a little scenic route, yeah? All right. Yeah? yeah. Oh, <laughs> Let's go, Princess. OK. So tell me, who came up with the word flamingos? No, it's flamingos. Flamingos. Who? Flamingos. Flamangos. Flamingos. It's flamangos. Not flamingos. Flamangos. FLA. FLA slash mangoes. Not flamingos. Not flamingos. Flamangos. Yeah, flamangos. Right. Restaurant in New Jersey. Yeah, why not? Are you fucking crazy? <laughs> there you are. Thank you so much for the lift. Wow. Florida mango. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. Oh, my God. It's like a zoo in here. Yeah, well, it is tropical. Who designed it? My daughter decorated it. Amazing. How drunk was she when she put the final sketches together? We do like the tropics. I don't see anything wrong in bringing tropical to White House Station. This is Jody. She's Jody. going to take care of you. OK, brilliant. OK. Thank you, Adele. <sighs> well, how do you start this one? It's endless. OK, um, let's start off with Ali tuna okay. on the flaming tiki platter. A tiki? And then I'll end up with that tsunami on filet mignon. OK. Thank you. OK, it's for Chef Ramsay. Oh, all right. I think Chef Ramsay's mouth's going to drop to the floor when he sees a few of the things on the menu. Our tuna appetizer. Thank you. Enjoy. Is that always that hot in terms of spicing? They have a tendency to spice things up a bit. It's an embarrassment to tuna. Yes. Ask Cheryl to taste that other little end there. I will. Thank you, my darling. Brian, Cheryl, Chef Ramsay would like you guys to taste the tuna. It is really spicy. I've been saying this since I got here. I never had a problem. Doesn't matter if you love it or not. Everybody else, four times I've got complaints about being spicy. So he's, he's done with it. Ribs are destroyed. Sunday we made those. It's a week. Four days. Whatever, send it. Just send it out. Send it out. Wow. I see platters like that. I hear Hawaiian music. Oh, my God. So do we use that and start grilling away? Or... It's for looks. Thank you. Mm. Oh, fuck me. What the fuck? Stuck. Are you trying to get the smoke detectors to come? No, I'm trying to get the thing off the top. Excuse me. Having a world-known chef spit out my food is not good. Tiki platter. Shitty platter. We need Bill ready to carve a play. Tell my father to put his, his black chef coat on. Yeah. Cheryl wants you to put your black chef coat on. Next, Philly Mignon. So I'm sort of looking forward to a really nice, classic piece of meat. Show you where it is. Strip down, baby. I'm not looking. I'm getting excited. We have a flaming filet mignon that I serve tableside. People just love it. 
the chef's dream, filet mignon. Mm. Something simple, something classic, and something that's not normally served on a trolley. <laughs> what is that thing? These are roof tile. We're eating it from the tile. Yeah, I'm gonna finish it. It's still cooking. You'll love this. Yeah, you'll I'll love this. this. What's that in there? This is butter and garlic. Oh, garlic butter. Mm -hmm. It goes on top. And so the tsunami is the garlic butter running down the drain pipe. Right. Watch out, all the stuff dripping out the end. <laughs> Thank you very much. Quite welcome. Well, me. Mm. That's the toughest and the most chewiest filet mignon I've ever tasted in my entire life. The thing's so chewy. Is it's it chewy? A, yeah, the meat is so tough. Do you want me to? Uh, yeah, no, I, 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 I finished it. Take your yeah, wife. Okay. Chef Ramsay hated the food. He hated the decor, and I can't understand why. Less than impressed with lunch. Right, right. Good to meet you. Chef Ramsay is anxious to discuss Flamengo's eclectic cuisine with the head chef. And how long have we been here? Um, about a month. What's it like cooking that food? Does it blow you away? Are you excited? No, it doesn't you... blow me away. I think it's all over the place. Straight up, would you eat it? No. No, but you have to serve it to me. When a new chef starts in a restaurant, he wants to put his imprint on the menu. Right, but they all want change right now. Who doesn't want change? The owners. Right. Who it's writes the... the menus? We do. Why wouldn't you listen to your chef? It's frustrating for me, too, because, like I said, I've made the suggestions. I've said we need you to You sent it to me. You sent every fucking dish to me, and it was embarrassing. Well, no. That's not cooking. That's dog shit. We take pride in what we serve, and he just ripped it apart. It's awful. Chef Ramsay is already aware that the food is horrible, and the chef is really an unhappy cook. But before Gordon can even contemplate making changes, he needs to get the complete story by observing a dinner service. What name? Her. All right, you can follow me. When the dinner starts coming in, just start throwing some asparagus on, put it on the side. The menu's large. The menu's a little all over the joint. It is. You know, really big. I don't have time to read this. It's got a lot of things on it. Tonight's dinner service is busier than usual because Chef Ramsay is in town. You ready to order? And his customers order from this massive menu. I'll have the crispy rainforest tilapia. Okay. Tickets are flying into the kitchen. Here we go. Calamari marinara. But the challenge to perfect such a huge variety of dishes is overwhelming for Chef Brian. I, I don't even know what to do. This is absolute crazy, you know that? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Got way too many tickets up there. You can't have 400 things on your menu. You just can't do it. I don't care who you are. It doesn't matter. We're absolutely buried over here. Buried. We don't even have these set up yet. Unbelievable. <laughs> Although Chef Brian is slammed in the kitchen, it's like, a, it's like a circus over here. The customers are not exactly sympathetic. Nice drink, see what's going on We've been here since six o'clock. Great. Right now, I don't know if you want to go over this one because no. they're ready to burst. Well, I can't do it. They're all waiting the well, you might same want to amount. Say something, you know? Like we know. Shut your mouth already. Absolute crazy. Adele's attitude is completely toxic, and it trickles down from us to the patrons. It's 45 minutes into dinner service, and Brian has finally completed the first orders. I need his food out of the window right now. However, just as fast as dishes are rushed to the dining room, the shrimp are really small, and the risotto is very bland. They are quickly returned to the kitchen. The shrimps are just way too small. And she said the red rice, the risotto, is just bland. Oh, my God. I've had it today already. I've had it. Why am I here? That's it. I'm taking a break. Fuck this. Right, two seconds. Bottom line, I mean, it was just about overwhelming. Disaster. Disaster? Major. The menu I was thrown into, 
and it's a disastrous menu. How can you get passionate about cooking something you hate? It's all over the place. It's uncookable. Right. I need to know that you're committed. I'm committed. committed to change. Yes. Because they have no clue. This restaurant turnaround cannot depend on them. It depends on you sticking with me. Is right. that clear? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Yep. Now that Chef Ramsay understands Brian's issues, they head back to the kitchen. Here I go. Meanwhile, Bill is ready to serve the tableside tsunami. I get tired real quick, but to help the business, I'll do whatever I have to do. Is that well done? No, it's me and Rare. If you just cut that a little bit, you'll see it's me and Rare. All you have to do is cut it. It's cut. No, but I mean cut it this way, because it was sitting on a hot tile. It's not medium rare. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, jeez. You've got a 70 year old he man going round and round the dining room. No, no, he shouldn't be doing this at this pace. Well, they're too, so cheap, they're too cheap to hire anybody else. What are you trying to do? Put the father in the grave? I mean, that's he's got one foot in there already. He didn't even want to do this. He didn't want, he wanted he to retire. Me that. That's what hurts. Yeah. Bill is overworked. And it's not fair. After a night where he witnessed a dejected chef, unhappy patrons, and an overworked older owner, Gordon knows he has to have a serious talk with the tough mother-daughter team of Adele and Cheryl. I wanted to talk to you both personally and express my concerns about Bill. I'm seriously worried about him in a big way. Running around at the age of 70, pushing the cart. Why are you guys letting him do this? Well, he really doesn't work that much. You know what? It's always poor Bill. That's Bill's nickname. Poor Bill. Why have you asked me to come here? Because I feel like I'm wasting my time. Because we don't know what the problem is. The service downstairs tonight, how was that? The kitchen, the kitchen was a, a disaster. Yeah. So you've employed the chef? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he hasn't been given chance to cook. He's cooking your menu. Right. Well, I, we never changed the menu since we opened. He never gets chance to show you what he can cook. Because we felt that our food was very good. Right. Are you stupid? I guess I am. You're accepting that it's perfect. I'm trying to tell you bluntly that it's not. Yet you never seem to accept your own mistakes. It's never your doing. We thought our food was good, but now you just, you know, said it's horrible. You cannot see a problem in your own establishment. No. I'm being honest. What I would like to see is just a little bit more integrity with owning up to the responsibility to why this place is not working. There's no acceptance on your own mistakes. Good night. Chef Ramsay realizes that the only way to begin to fix some of these problems is to do something these owners have never done, have a staff meeting. It's so important to clear the air. If anyone has anything to say, please talk about it. I'll listen to anything. Doesn't mean I'm going to agree to it. The menu needs to be simplified. Are you kidding? Cut it way back. People want to come in here and cut off shorts and have a beer and a burger. Yeah, but you just started. I don't even know how you cook thoroughly yet. You've got to have the confidence and allow this man to step up to the mark. You need to be a little bit more entrusting on that and less nervous about letting go. I can't do my job if they don't let me do my job. OK, next question. I can't understand why the F you don't like me. Well. Isabel, you're an excellent server, but you don't freaking listen. But I know what I'm doing. I don't need to be constantly told the same thing over and over again. Isabel, please be quiet. Why would you think you have to tell me when I've been here for you, two years? You I know what the F I'm doing. Isabel, you don't know when to shut up. They don't want to hear opinions. We're still going to get treated like garbage. I don't think they're going to change. Centrally located, next to the train station, Flamangos has managed to push away its local customers. Today, Chef Ramsay begins his plan to bring them back. We're going to start making some changes. Yeah? 
I am afraid to make the change. Change number one. Let this man cook something that he wants to put on as a special tonight without any interruptions from you two. Second change. Bill, what is your favorite dish to cook? My meatloaf. When was the last time you cooked it? Eight years ago. Tonight you're going to cook that as well. Really? Change yes. I don't want you around there pushing the trolley out, running around like a blue ass <laughs> fly. Both items will go on tonight as specials. My meatloaf that I've been making for years that I haven't made in a long time, it's going to be great to have it on the menu tonight. Your meatloaf. What are you seasoning it with? Fresh parsley and a little salt and pepper. I enjoy cooking a lot better than pushing the trolley around. <laughs> Brian, what are you doing? Chicken and shrimp jubilee, rosemary, gorgonzola, brown sauce. Chef Ramsay definitely let me have free reign on creating my own special, and I wanted to prove it to Bill and Adele that I can do it. I can handle the job. Brian, very nice. Dig in. That is so good. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up? Mm. Yeah. Yes? Good. Everybody happy? Yes. yes. I liked it, but I would never order meatloaf out. Never. I can't believe that Chef Ramsay wants meatloaf. Tonight, we can't have a disaster. So let's get set up, let's get prepped. We're opening up. Let's go, guys, yes? As Chef Brian and his team prepare specials for tonight's dinner service, no detail goes unnoticed by Chef Ramsay out in the dining room. What are those nails? What's going on there? What happened? Aren't they pretty? Prissy, they're fucking I don't... disgusting. Chef Ramsay asked her about her damn nails. Cheryl is the 80s. Are you high maintenance or what? Huh? Seriously? But I work hard. Yeah. Unfortunately, the wrong places. Hello. Hi. Follow me. All of our specials tonight are excellent. I'll have the okay, chicken jubilee. I'd like the meatloaf, please. Excellent choice. I think there's hope adding the specials, but will people like it? I don't really know. Right, I want to see you step up to the mark tonight, OK? So get on top of it from the outs. Yes, sir. Ordering three jubilee meatloaf chicken special. I'm on. Really big night tonight. More importantly, these specials have to work, but Brian has to come out of the kitchen and run it like a head chef because, unfortunately, the owners have employed him as a line cook. Tonight has to be his night. Three Jubilees picking up, one meatloaf. Many of the diners have ordered the specials. Chicken special. And that has had a positive impact on the kitchen. You're doing OK. You're doing beautiful. Brian is not spread too thin and is able to push out the food much more efficiently than last night. Go with this, please, please. And in the dining room, how is everything fabulous? Meatloaf and Chicken Jubilee specials are creating a buzz. Meatloaf uh, out of this yeah. world. While the original menu is creating a slightly different kind of buzz. It's overcooked. It's overcooked. I'll bring the owner over, okay, to talk to you. Adele? Yeah. Table 31. The mahi is overdone. They want to speak with you. I'm a little busy, okay? I know you're busy. I'm letting you know that they're waiting. Tell them I will be out as in a I minute. did. That's what I did. Okay, so stop fucking me. I'm pretty fed up. I'm treated like almost stupid. Adele can be downright nasty and insulting. Okay, complaints. What are they? Okay. Mahi? It's dry. It's dry. dry. So you don't want dry. it. Okay. Bastard. I know when the customers come in, you have to, to be positive, but they're liars. God help us. I bet you see more shit in here than a muck spreader has in New Jersey for the last hundred years. See you later, my friend. He's killing me right here. I'm dying with the fuck sight. A lot of special left in the kitchen. Which helped a lot, but I was still discouraged with the old menu. It just got a little backed up. Oh, we missed the chicken penne. Get that going on the fly. I need a chicken breast working on the grill. The biggest panic in that kitchen there is trying to get your head around doing this menu. There's so many components in that menu that you're right. reaching for this or reaching for that, and everything's right. just so sporadic. Nothing's right. streamlined, and that's why it's an absolute nightmare. I mean, a real nightmare. Bye. Thank you. Here's the good news. Chicken special, meatloaf, we're big hit. Now, the changes may have been subtle, but it wasn't enough. Nowhere near enough. In order for this to work, whether Adele or Cheryl likes it, this place needs to take a dramatic turn. 
biggest, in fact, the biggest turn has ever had since this place has opened. It's time to say goodbye to the tropics in the center of New Jersey. Everybody, stand up, grab a chair from the dining room, and follow me. Let's go. I was just wondering what's going on. Grab a chair, take two. Let's go. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. What's gonna happen? Oh, hold on. No! What do you mean, no? That's Willie, my alligator. Trust me, I need him in the truck. I can't believe Chef Ramsay grabbed my alligator and just threw it in the truck. Just threw it in there. Oh, hey, easy with my hey. chair. Hey. We need the menus. Ah. Ah. I don't think it's funny. Watch if you want to keep your job. <laughs> right. Well, I want that alligator. They are not getting that. Cheryl and Adele are in complete denial about this place. Nobody wants this tacky tropical decor. They better not throw that stuff out, or there's going to be a problem. Oh, my God. What is going on? I want my alligator. Come over. I had a very good feeling that this is the beginning of the end of Flamango's. Adele. The only way I know when I leave White House Station that the tropics aren't going to creep back in is to burn them. <laughs> gone to the menus, gone to the bamboo, gone to the crocodile, gone to the pineapples. The tropics are going. My greatest fear is to lose everything we worked for. Three, two, one. The only way I know when I leave White House Station, that the tropics aren't going to creep back in, <laughs> is to burn them. <laughs> the tropics are going. Three, two, one. Hold on, wait. Sorry, I forgot the most important thing. The sign. <laughs> Say goodbye to flamingos. I just can't tell you how happy I am to see that flamingo sign gone. Ready? I'm going to leave you to the expert. Thank you so much. Please do it quickly before they change their mind. Ah, look at that! Anyone for cooked alligator? That's a good one. It feels great to watch flamingos go up in fire. Adele may be upset that she's losing the traffic, but it wasn't working. It's hot as Florida here. <laughs> that is amazing. Wow. Is that right? I don't want you to be upset. Please. She is. Huh? You're going to make me cry. I am devastated right now. Change is difficult. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard to say goodbye to the past. You know that? It'll be all right, It'll be fine. Hey. It's just the tropics. The four walls are fine. We have faith in you. The past is gone. It will be for the better. But Adele needs to come around. Now, I have regrets. I don't know what's to come. So we'll see. It's all right, baby. After getting rid of the tropics, Gordon now moves ahead with his plan to transform flamingos. Good morning. Oh, morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are we? OK, nervous. I told him the change would not be subtle, and it's important you embrace change. That's not easy, but it's for the best. Ready? Ready. Yes. Goodbye, Florida. No more mangoes. Welcome to the junction. <laughs> appropriate is that? Yes, railroad tracks. Junction means trains, but junction also means coming together, which is what this community is going to do on a daily basis. They are going to come together at the junction. Oh, I love it. Adele, how does it sound? Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Takes me a while. Takes you a while. Yes. I'm not happy about the name. Come in. Welcome to the junction. <gasps> Of this place. To open 
open up this room was absolutely crucial. It looks twice the size. Oh, my God! The wow factor was everything. I can't believe the wall is gone. The tropics have gone. This restaurant was claustrophobic. It's much more open. Sand it down and distress the tables to match the chairs. The pineapples have gone. And more importantly, it's just lighted the whole place up. Look at the raw bar! There is no longer a raw bar. This is milkshake heaven. It's perfect. It's a lot more casual now. I'm very excited about the junction. Adele, what do you think? I don't like it. I don't like it. I hate blue. Unbelievable. I'm dumbfounded. I don't think I have ever heard anyone say they hate the color blue. I hate it. I hate it. it. You hate it. How can you be positive about something you hate? Ugly. I want to throw up. I hate it. Hate, hate, hate. The changes to what was once called flamangos has been dramatic. It's terrible. And Adele is finding it hard to accept any of them. I love what we had. That's all. And uh, this is a very drastic change. And I really don't like it. Think about your customers, because this is not for you to sit and enjoy. This is for you to run as a business. I regret it right now, but I want to see the menu, you know, and see how it's all going to come together. Adele. Thank wow. you. Now, this is trying to keep it in keeping with what's happening in the community. It's diverse, it's sophisticated, and more important, it's modern. How does that read for you? I mean, it, it's simple. There's a little bit of everything for everyone. Yeah. Burgers, meatloaf, we do a chicken. It's comfort food, but it's fancy comfort food. There's no other place around here like this. What do you think of the menu? I mean, this is very limited. Very limited menu. This menu is so limited, it's not going to be successful, and people are not going to come in with that small, small menu. I'm trying so hard to help here. Yeah. There's one thing I need to say to you, is that you cannot be personal about nostalgia that hasn't worked, and you have to embrace change. Because if you're not going to embrace change, do yourself a favor, shut the shop and retire. She has to get used to it because this is what's going to bring people into this restaurant. And Adele's sitting, looking like she wants to throw herself in front of a train. After Chef Ryan spent the day learning the Junction's concise menu... That looks marvelous. Chef Ramsay introduces the staff to the new dishes. If you just have a look at the portion size, it's in keeping with the plate. This is a hallmark. Not just a burger. Three different mini buffalo, meatloaf, and a turkey burger. The bigger portions, glazed salmon, a simple, delicious roast chicken. Who'd like a taste? Dig in. <laughs> dig in, dig in, dig in. Tell me, no. tell me someone moist. Mm. That's different. That's good. These salmon are so juicy. Oh, I hate salmon. I love salmon. Oh. Tastes oh, like I'm a good. fish. Adele, how's the salmon, darling? Oh. And the new menu is exactly what we needed. It's nice and simple, but Adele has a very hard time accepting change. This was their last chance to pull this place out. Just go with it. Oh. It's 30 minutes before the doors open to this new restaurant. You got your salad bowls? Yeah, I'm ready. Beautiful. And everyone is excited about the menu and decor. Everyone except Adele, who has hidden herself in the kitchen on the dessert station. What are you looking for? Cr apple crumb, but it's out. Joe, can you do desserts? Yes, sir. Here, give me, I'll take that. He's fine. He can do a dessert. All right. I need your smile. I'll be right out. I'm very nervous. It shouldn't be to my liking. It's to what the customers will want. I don't know if they're going to like this. <sighs> Good. First customer's there. I really want to go home. Did you just say you want to go home? Yes, I did. 
Right now, I don't feel my mother feels she has hope. The register has to start ringing for her to feel more confident, because I know she's mortified. As the restaurant starts to fill up with customers, Chef Ramsay inspires the kitchen staff for the big night. Right, Brian, you ready? Yes, sir. When I get an owner like that out there that tells me she wants to go home, tonight, I need you to get even more in control to make this fucking thing work, yeah? Let's do it, yeah. feel great about the new menu. This is a new beginning. Let's take it from there. This, the sky's the limit. All right, let's do this. This looks like a place to be fun to come to every day. Really? Thank you. It's open, it's um, inviting, right? You should hear what those people say. I know, say. they love it. They love it, and then it's... This is more inviting to go to than it was before. Well, screw it down. I'm not screwing them. They're the ones with the money. I'm going to have the chicken jubilee. I'm going to have the glazed salmon. Ribs, OK. Chicken jubilee, lemon chicken. With the first orders in, the pressure shifts to Chef Brian, who must execute the Junction's new menu. We're going to do a salmon and a jubilee next, so let's finish those. Put the whole pan in the oven. Don't even sizzle the plate. Beautiful. When he's in the window. Curious. OK. Thanks to Chef Ramsay's more focused menu, Brian is able to get orders out in a timely manner. Table 30 in the window. And more importantly, this is money. the customers are loving the food. It's really good. Who would have thought? You got Brian Dill pickle. It's not flavor. It's very nice. It's very tasty. I like this. And it's, it's nice and bright. It's too bright. I don't like it. Oh. Now, where's the old bag? Oh, where's mom? <laughs> what? I just... Don't have the patience anymore for anything. Nice to see. You. Where is Madame Grumpy? Where is she? Oh, here we are. He says it's going to work. How stupid can you be? Uh. Can I have a quick word with you? Two seconds. Wait. What's the matter? I'm very upset. I don't like this setup. The decor. You can make this work. Only if you believe in it. Already, you don't believe in it. The negativity is going to rub off on your staff. Mm. It's going to rub off on your daughter. And the customers will be feeding you. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I need to get out of here. I have to be proud of what I'm doing. I am not proud of this. I would never run a restaurant like this. I want to go home. I would rather close the doors. It's opening night at the junction. And even though the customers are happy, Very well seasonal. Adele is miserable and ready to leave. I want to go home. Chef Ramsay is frustrated, and he knows the only way to get through to Adele is through her husband, Bill. Why is Adele so against it? Help me, please. She's that way. But she's our first point of contact. Yeah. If you could do me a favor and just ask her to put a smile yeah, on that on face. face. OK, I, I will do that. Adele can't hide her emotions. If she's mad, you're going to tell. And it's a struggle to get her to go in your direction. But I'm going to give her what I got. How you doing? OK? I'm scared. I'm so nervous. Don't be scared. Just keep smiling. Smile. Smile. There you go. My mother is a, a hard shell to crack. My father is great. He's talking to her, trying to make her feel better. Wonderful yeah. job. Good. It's delicious. Thank you. Good. I'm glad delicious. you enjoyed it. Uh, you like very Bill's good. meatloaf? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. I wanted to tell you how beautiful the chair is. You like it. I do. She is lighting up. Is she lighting up? Yes. I don't think I've gone that long. It's got to happen before I'm 17. <laughs> I told you, she's a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't tell me on what scale of a pain in the ass she is. Oh, she's 11. Oh, 11. <laughs> Excellent. This is great. Oh, this good. Is wonderful. Thank you. It was a success. People love the food, and I feel that there's hope. Everybody's happy. It's very good. Good. I'm glad you enjoy. In spite of the dramatic changes, the staff rose to the occasion. Done. Done. And customers left happy. And now, even Adele appears to be coming around. First of all, I want to thank everybody for all their hard work. Yeah? And a big thank you to the Queen. <laughs> I'm serious. Why? There were a lot of changes. Yes, it was scary, but she pulled it off. It's very hard to put the past behind. I think the restaurant could be successful, but I don't know. Only time will tell. When I first arrived, you'd lost touch with your customers in the community. Tonight, you reconnected in a big way. 
Tonight, the junction, even though the history is very short, it's only three hours old, is a success. But it's only the foundation, OK? You need to build on it together. Chef Ramsay definitely is giving us a second chance. And I'm just very anxious to be successful. And I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I will be back. And I'll take great pleasure in witnessing the success. And by the time I get back, madam, I want you moved out of that house. <laughs> yes? Promise me? I promise. OK, good. Well done. Seriously well done. Yes? What I've learned from Chef Ramsay is change is good, and I'm up for it. Thank Take you. Take care. Can't wait to see Thank you. you. And maybe I'll get some of the money back that I put into this place. Well done, then I could retire. Right, good night. Good night. Yes? Good night. Big kiss. God, it's so nice to see you smiling like that. You know that. Well, I'm glad you enjoy New Jersey, at least this part of it. I'm thinking of moving here. Oh, my God. God help you. <laughs> What a week. We made some dramatic changes here. We changed the menu, we changed the decor, we even changed the name. That, honestly, was the easy part. The hardest part was changing Adele. She has to look forward, otherwise the history of the junction will be a short one. God, I'm a long way from home. Where is my train? Come on. In the days that followed, Adele slipped back to her old, stubborn self and started to redecorate the junction. The new concise menu, however, remains in place and is a hit in White House Station. We're doing meatloaf. I like that. 